day when hope shall sing its triumph and sadness flee away. Dear Savior, haste, come, come to earth, dispel the night and show thy face and bid us hail the dawn of grace. O come, divine Messiah, the world in silence waits the day when hope shall sing its triumph and sadness flee away. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray. O oh God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. God forever and ever. Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is, at, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, be not discouraged. The Lord, your God, is in your midst, a mighty Savior. He will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love. He will sing joyfully because of you, as one sings at festivals. The word of the Lord. Oh. 
my strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. With joy you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. Cry out with joy and gladness, for among you is the great and holy one of Israel. Give thanks to the Lord, acclaim his name. Among the nations make known his deeds. Proclaim how exalted is his name. Cry out with joy and gladness, for among you is the great and holy one of Israel. Sing praise to the Lord for his glory. Achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exultation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Cry out with joy and glad. St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Luke. The crowds asked John the Baptist, What should we do? He said to them in reply, Whoever has two cloaks should share with the person who has none, and whoever has food should do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they said to him, Teacher, what should we do? He answered them, stop collecting more than what is prescribed. Soldiers asked him, 
And what is it that we should do? He told them, do not practice extortion, do not falsely accuse anyone, and be satisfied with your wages. Now the people were filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all, saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Exhorting them in many other ways, he preached good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. So today is Gaudete Sunday, hence the rose vestments. And the word Gaudete means rejoice. And the reason that we really emphasize rejoicing on this day is because the coming of Christ on Christmas is getting close. But I want to focus in a bit more on just what this rejoicing is. What exactly are we talking about with this particular kind of joy, the joy that goes with this time of year? Now, the joy of this time of year really pertains to the joy of freedom. More specifically, freedom from sin. So as the prophet Zephaniah says in our first reading, the Lord will remove the judgment against you, and we will be free. But to what should we compare the joy of this freedom? Well, if scripture is any indication, the joy of this freedom would be something analogous to the joy of having been healed. Because from the early church on, theologians have seen the Christ's miraculous healings as symbolizing freedom from sin. And so the joy that we should be anticipating is something more like the joy we would have. It's, it's, it's something more like the joy you would have if you, had sud you were suddenly given sight, if you had spent your entire life blind. The joy you would have if you could suddenly hear, if you had been deaf all your life, or the joy if you could suddenly walk, if you had never been able to do that before. Something analogous to that joy is what John the Baptist was surely trying to get his listeners ready for. And when they asked him what they should do to prepare for that, he basically told them, renounce your sins and busy yourselves with the works of charity. So if you have food, share it. If you have extra clothes, share those. And any sins you may have in your life in relation to whatever walk of life you are, whether you're a tax collector, a Roman soldier, or whatever, renounce all of it. And so we should be doing the same as we prepare for the coming of Christ on Christmas. So we should be doing works of charity, and whatever sins, whatever greed, whatever mal, whatever wrath, whatever, whatever envy, whatever lust, whatever may be binding us, let's renounce that and look forward to the joy that we will know that one day when we are completely free of those chains. Let's let anticipation of that joy be primarily what we are about this season. Because if we don't do that, often what ends up happening is we just kind of escape into the magic of the Christmas trees and the Christmas lights and the cookies and the cocoa and Bing Crosby on TV and all that other fun stuff. And I love all that stuff. The problem is if we're primarily about that, well, for one, it's just a missed opportunity. But also, I mean, you get to the end of the Christmas season, and then it's just kind of like, ugh. Well, that Christmas tree is getting brown. 
Those leftover cookies have seen better days. And if I hear that Mariah Carey song one more time, I'm going to lose it. So just box it all up and back to the attic with it. Let's just get on with the rest of the year. If we stay primarily focused on the true joy that this time of year is about, at the end of the Christmas season, we can be energized for the rest of the year and really focused on how we want to grow in our walk with the Lord for the rest of the year, and keeping our eye on the true prize, which is the joy that will come from the greatest freedom we could possibly know. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Heavenly Father, trusting in your divine providence, we now bring forward our petitions. For the church, that especially during this season of joyful anticipation, she might bring good news to the poor healing to the brokenhearted, and liberty to captives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations, that they may heed the good news of the gospel and embrace the message of Christ, who brings healing and hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the disabled, the aged, and the unemployed, that the Lord may strengthen them by our assistance and provide them with relief and encouragement. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For increased devotion to Our Lady of Guadalupe, that the faithful may continue to seek her as a source of help and protection, leading us ever closer to her, her beloved Son, Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to be free of anxiety, generous in showing kindness, and ready to share our joyful hope, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering of our parish, especially Raimondo and Raimona Miklad, Sharon Abr Abrahamson, Dan Concepcion, Greg, Greg Gale, Darlene Perkins, and all COVID-19 victims and those that care for them, those who have asked for our prayers and those for whom we have promised to pray. We 
pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Joyce Garrett and Richard Danbury, Evelyn Osterreicher and Sylvie Freyfeld, that they be raised up to the fullness of heavenly life in Christ Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of Holy Family Cathedral, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are on the Holy Family prayer list and all the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we entrust these prayers to your loving care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 652, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, number 652. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him, with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. 
It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Andrew, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For communion, we will have two communion stations, one on this side and one on this side. For those of you who would like to receive communion only in the hand, please use this communion station. For those who would like to receive communion on the tongue or in the hand, please use this communion station. And we're inviting you to come up one pew at a time, and we ask you to wait for our usher to invite your pew to come up so that you can maintain one single file line. Our first communion hymn is number 741, Savior of the Nations Come, number 741.
Our second communion hymn is number 486, Come Lord and Tarry Not, number 486.
let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for a few announcements. Our second collection is for the Retirement Fund for Religious. This is a national fund of the church to assist elderly and retired religious older order sisters, brothers, and priests. Uh, ushers, please come forward. Christmas Novena cards are available at the back of the church. Please return the envelopes to the parish office before December 24th. This Wednesday at 7 p.m. in the Ministry Center, Dr. Laura Walters will be making a presentation on the Nativity of Jesus as depicted in Western art. Her presentations this past fall on the Archangels and Catholic Renaissance art in Florence were accessible and inspired presentations on our faith depicted in historic art. Friday evening from 7 to 8 p.m. we will have adoration with confessions. You can learn more about our parish events from our bulletin, parish website, Facebook page, and the list of events posted at the entrances of the church. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Our recessional hymn is number 615, Lift Up Your Heads, number 615. 